<laughs> uh, yesterday I, uh, I wrote on Twitter that uh, let's try uh, uh, being abroad without just with a phone. Because uh, in, in Norway, probably like in UK, um, you stop uh, carrying things like driver's license, plastic card. Like in Norway, you can uh, just have a phone and have everything there and just your top with your phone. And then, uh, <laughs> so I just didn't think about it. And then when I was already in London, I thought, no, I didn't have any, any cars with me. Okay, let's try how it works. So, so far, it's been working fine and I'm not hungry. Uh, I, I had my, uh, my food. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so let's uh, hope that I will manage to do my, my travel uh, uh, being... <coughs> Uh, uh, on just on my phone, but we are going to talk uh, com uh, com about completely different things. Of course, during this uh, hour or maybe 45 minutes. Uh, so my name is Vagif, and I'm uh, working with uh, mostly F Sharp. I've been working for last uh, like six, seven years. But this talk is completely platform uh, and uh, language agnostic. So no matter. But but uh, how many of you, by the way, on um, Microsoft uh, platform like .NET? Very few. Uh, Java? More heads. Um, anything else? TypeScript? Yeah, JavaScript? Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, how many have been using or tried uh, the actor model? Mm -hmm. Maybe half. Uh, actually, this talk also <laughs> not entirely about the actor model. So uh, what I'm going to present are some principles that can be applied to to other systems. And uh, I recently uh, delivered a version of this talk at Kandinsky conference in Berlin. And uh, there was another talk which really inspired me. Uh, it's about uh, why you don't need saga managers, workflow engines. And it resonated very much to what I'm going to present. Uh, so uh, it's not only about actors, it's more like how to bring your system to a certain state, how to guarantee that your system will come to the state you want it to with, uh, when you base your system on basically unreliable uh, messaging. So uh, a <coughs> few words about our product. Uh, I'm part of the project for Norwegian Broadcasting Corporation. It's a uh, like Norwegian version of BBC. And uh, what we do, we take care of uh, uh, streaming uh, platform, so people can stream uh, radio programs, TV programs, podcasts on their uh, devices. And um, our small group are responsible so for so-called uh, media distribution engines. So everything which uh, uh, the organization licenses or produces, we need to upload, we need to make it available for streaming. So there are very... Um, hard requirements for uh, durability, for uh, availability of the system. Uh, so we, we get through uh, message queue, currently using RabbitMQ. We also use uh, Azure Service Bus uh, messages. And uh, this is entrance to our system. <laughs> and what we do next, we need to, uh, this message can take com uh, commands about or where media files located, what to do with them. And then what we do is basically upload them and then make them available. Uh, so our technical stack, again, you don't need to know details about that, uh, but just for, for your information, so you have an idea of what we're working with. It's uh, the actor model using akka.net cluster, which uh, is a very good port of uh, akka JVM platform. So everything which akka.net has originates on JVM platform. So they uh, have been clever to use <laughs> Same terminology. So uh, if you have some questions about ACO.NET, you can just ask them on Stack Overflow without, uh, new, uh, without mentioning that it's ACO.NET, and you all, uh, often get answers from uh, people working on the Java side. Uh, F Sharp is the main programming language, uh, so it's functional programming. RabbitMQ, Azure Service Bus, uh, we use both SQL and no NoSQL uh, databases for, for the business layer. And uh, this talk is, uh, is a retrospective of changes to our approach, how we dealing with uh, messages, uh, which comes to our system. Uh, so how do we provide message handling uh, guarantees? So as, <coughs> as you uh, probably know that uh, uh, there are different types of semantics for delivery guarantees. There is, uh, of course, there is at most once uh, delivery. 
uh, where uh, basically uh, there is no uh, guarantee that a uh, uh, message will be delivered. It, it's delivered most of the time, but uh, Typically, it's uh, in-process uh, messaging storage. So if your system crashes, you will lose your message. Uh, then there is at least one delivery, which involves uh, durable message storage, where uh, mm, messages uh, uh, act upon uh, processing. And then if message is not act, then it may be retried. So, and, but of course, uh, the downside of it that you, uh, first of all, it uh, comes at a cost of performance. And then also it uh, uh, comes at a cost of uh, potential for delivering messages more than once, which may or may not have uh, vital consequences. For example, if you're in banking, and if it's a uh, command to uh, transfer a payment, that can be fatal for, for you if your payment will be transferred multiple times. And there is also <coughs> exactly one delivery where, as uh, the, uh, this pattern says, a uh, message is guaranteed to be delivered only once. And uh, probably it's worth uh, entire talk which can uh, uh, to prove that um, why you shouldn't be doing that. So it's it's really costly uh, to provide that, and in uh, most of business scenarios, it's uh, uh, it's not needed. So you can uh, uh, handle your scenarios using first two scenarios, um, uh, either at most one delivery or at least once delivery. Uh, so those who worked with um, some uh, actor model frameworks, what do you think? Uh, the world of actors use typically at most once or at least once or maybe exactly once. So who think that um, the actors framework like Microsoft or Lean's like Akka um, they use um, at most once delivery? Yeah, uh, one hand or one, one and a half hands I think uh, at least once delivery. Mm, more hands exactly once delivery. No hands. Okay. Um, actually, uh, the, uh, by default, and uh, uh, in uh, systems like ACA, it's not even by default. This is how it is implemented. It's at most once uh, uh, delivery. So <coughs> basically, there is, you, you don't have a formal guarantee that you, you will get message more than once. And there are uh, many reasons for that. Uh, um, uh, probably the most important reason is that it's costly to have uh, durable message delivery mechanism. And ACCA is based for scalability and performance. You can basically have actor-based system running in your mobile phone using ACCA. And it will work perfectly. And then if you need to implement protocol with at least one delivery, it's going to cost you. So what they made a decision that <laughs> you can, it should be, up to consumer of the actor model to uh, implement uh, at, at least once delivery when they want it in those scenarios. Instead of sacrifi sacrificing uh, performance and um, scalability for the sake of making at least once delivery for everyone. So this is a, a, in, in major actor systems, it's at most once delivery. Uh, and, uh, some systems can be configured to achieve at least once delivery using uh, infinite tries, like Microsoft Orleans. But again, even Orleans has at most once delivery by default. <laughs> so how can we run a reliable system with at most once uh, message delivery? Because our systems, of course, uh, need to be safe. Uh, they, they can't fail. Uh, yesterday I read uh, on Twitter, my colleague of mine, he said that uh, complex system or like enterprise systems, they never fail, they, but they can disappoint. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> so how can we make our system not disappointing our customers and users if we uh, base it on unreliable <coughs> at most once delivery? So uh, coming back to our first diagram. So this is our, our architecture. So we get messages from durable queues, but then durability ends. And we have to deal with the rest uh, in our system and make it reliable. So uh, we have a, <coughs> a message queue configuration that <coughs> actually we configure it at, in the beginning uh, uh, of our project. And we still uh, pretty much use the same 
uh, uh, rabbit and queue configuration where, where we have main queue. Uh, for example, this is the first queue is a, is a queue for uh, subtitles. And then, um, then we have a queue for retries, queue for errors, <coughs> and queues for rejected messages. So what happens is that uh, we have a message and then uh, we need to act it, acknowledge it uh, when um, message is handled. Uh, and if we don't um, want to acknowledge it, if there are some error happens, we put it uh, to retry queue. And then after a certain time, message comes back. After few retries, and goes to error queue, and so on. I eventually, can be rejected. So what is good in a systems like RabbitMQ is that it's a lot of this you can declare. So it's actually declarative. So you can declare um, uh, attributes on the right-hand side. You see some attributes like time to leave, then de uh, dead letter exchange. So you can uh, 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 make it declarative. So the, all this message route, how they travel in the system. So it, it works <coughs> very good, but it's all sort of on the entrance of your system. And in the first version of our system, we make um, uh, these rules uh, going through our uh, processing logic. So uh, the version one, uh, if we use uh, titles of popular song, then we can call it Don't Pay the Ferryman until he gets you to the other side. So what we, what we were doing is that, okay, we have rabbit in queue, so message needs to be acknowledged. Let's wait with acknowledgement and I think, uh, 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 until we are fully done with, with everything. So this is how uh, it was working. We have a uh, rabbit queue, uh, and then uh, it, it can be service bus queue, it can be uh, some Amazon queues and so on. So message is coming to the first actor. If you don't use actor system, it can be first uh, web service, for example. Then it goes to the next, next, next. <laughs> and then in the end, you either acknowledge or negative acknowledge the message. And if you negative acknowledge the message, it goes to retry queue. Uh, so this is not transactional semantics. Uh, I need to stress it out. It's, uh, uh, it's at least one delivery, actually, that we, implement, we implemented using external durable queues. So uh, what uh, happened then, that in every stage of message processing, we, we could knock it, so we can set negative acknowledgement to that, and only the uh, last stage of uh, message processing could send positive acknowledge. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> in uh, uh, enterprise patterns, it's called like return uh, address pattern. So, message, they're wrapped in some envelope, message envelope, with uh, information about uh, this acknowledgement ID, acknowledgement tag, and then uh, uh, it's like return address, basically, wh where it needs to be acknowledged. And uh, so, at every stage, you can either uh, negative uh, acknowledgement or send it further or in the final stage you can positive acknowledgement and then it, it goes to return address with this acknowledgement. So then you have this message envelope with payload and this ACK ID. <coughs> so <coughs> it worked but it has some significant drawbacks. Uh, first of all messages say uh, they have to be like uh, polluted with uh, this uh, additional information related to the, the acknowledgement. You, you have to uh, put message in this uh, envelope, kind of like acknowledgement ID, but th that's not the worst part of it. Uh, uh, the worst part was probably processing logic that only last actor in chain could send uh, positive acknowledgement for these messages, but all actors, uh, in intermediate actors, could say negative acknowledgement. So think about that, there you have a team, people working on uh, design of these actors, and then they have to know where actor is placed uh, in the chain. So it actually breaks a single responsibility uh, uh, principle. <coughs> so your actor needs to know that it's a part of a uh, uh, larger workflow, and okay, if I'm not the last one, I can, I can sort of send knack, uh, but uh, I can't send ACK because if, if a message is acknowledged, then there is no way to acknowledge it twice. So it was, it was really uh, hard to maintain this code. Uh, so, and, and then also operations that were long running. And what we're doing <coughs> is that we uploading files. And uh, uh, usually uh, there are multiple versions of media files for each 
TV radio program. So we can upload um, five or six qualities uh, for long uh, movie, which takes like two hours, it, uh, uh, the file size can be several gigabytes. So uh, what happened, what was happening is that uh, if there is some inter uh, intermediate error and then we are almost done uh, and then the process takes uh, many minutes, um, then we have to start everything from, from scratch, everything all over again. So, uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, some of the queues that were configured with so-called TTL policy, it's time to leave, uh, because message uh, uh, queue, queue uh, needs to know when it can consider message as a dead, like not processed. And you shouldn't really uh, let queue keep messages uh, um, for, uh, forever. So uh, typically you assign, okay, after 30 minutes, um, consider message uh, dead. In some scenarios, we had very long um, files. In Norway, um, uh, there is a program where it's a kind of typical Norwegian, maybe Scandinavian style, where you put cameras somewhere in the nature and then you start uh, recording things. And then you can have a film which lasts like for 24 hours. Think about uh, the size of this file. And then you start uh, uploading um, uh, files for, for different media qualities. And then uh, uh, this TT TTL policy strikes before you finish with upload. You have to start from um, um, all over again. So basically, uh, it, it, really, it didn't really work uh, well. And also message processing, it could contain forks and joints. It was very hard to arrange this uh, processing of these negative and positive acknowledgments. Uh, then also, how long should a postman wait? Because if you think about... <laughs> like real world scenarios. And the more I worked with actors, more I was convinced that if something is not natural from like in the real world, you should really consider it because the actor model was uh, uh, originally developed uh, 50 years ago. It was uh, first articles came around 1973. And um, uh, they uh, stressed out that actually they were using the uh, laws of uh, real world, of physics, when, tr when trying to um, set up um, the actor model principles. And basically, when you, when you have uh, the message which came with the postman, uh, because message queue, uh, they bring you messages uh, with some kind of postman. So you, you tell the postman, okay, wait until I do everything which this letter says, and only then I I will sign that I have received this letter. So definitely there is something wrong with, uh, uh, with this uh, approach. So uh, <laughs> then in first version, it was um, um, somewhat suboptimal um, improvement. We used durable queues as persistent bookmarks. So we decided, okay, <laughs> we can't really have uh, the whole process waiting for uh, 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 acknowledgement of the original message. Let's make smaller um, uh, parts of it. So we used uh, uh, durable queues uh, in between. And then, okay, we have a part of the process, do, do some work, another queue. Part of the process, another queue. It, it kind of uh, helped with these forks and joints, and also it helped to make um, individual file processing independent. Uh, so we, didn't, we, <laughs> we no longer wanted uh, uh, to wait until all media files for a particular TV program are handled. So we could like, split it into processing per file. Uh, but it was still not uh, optimal because it's still, uh, you had this, you, you sort of expose this uh, uh, acknowledgement logic to your uh, business logic. So messages had to be wrapped uh, into uh, envelopes. Uh, 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 also, you, you got your system partitioned. Your, uh, mm, uh, it, it was not like, no longer like one actor system. Basically, it, we, we partitioned our system uh, um, uh, into multiple smaller uh, actor systems just uh, to convince this acknowledgement process. So it also felt wrong from the system design point of view. And, um, and again, some units of work can still be long running. We can still have this uh, program, uh, extreme program, which takes 24 hours to run, and then one particular file can break uh, all time to leave uh, settings. 
So, and again, we, we still made Postman wait, maybe, for, maybe not for the whole process, but for part of the process. So it felt, again, wrong to continue that way. Then we thought, okay, maybe we start using <coughs> at least once delivery ACA extensions, because uh, even though um, modern actor models, they offer uh, at uh, most once delivery as a default uh, policy, but there are some extensions you, you can choose to, um, to implement at least once delivery on the top of your, the actor system. And um, so it's, uh, it felt in the beginning uh, right because, okay, we're using actor model and it will be part of the actor model because uh, uh, we implement our uh, logic using actors. And that was a little bit of like uh, when uh, you only have a hammer as a tool, that everything around it looks like nails. So we've been using adapter model, and then we thought, okay, let's make everything using actors, and then, then it, it, it will feel right from programming point of view. Uh, but actually, it, it's not, because it's still, uh, it was really hard to uh, implement uh, messages. Again, they needed to, uh, to include delivery ID. So even though we used uh, uh, ex um, some extensions, then we, we had to, customize our uh, business logic. Uh, we had to uh, um, implement certain things like behavior configuration. What happens if uh, the message is not uh, um, acknowledged for, for a certain time? What actors should do? So suddenly we, we were started, uh, we were bringing all uh, uh, declarative semantic around message delivery, which uh, offered by Queues like uh, RabbitMQ, like Azure Service Bus, into the actor, the actor model, and uh, so uh, it was a kind of poor man durable queues. So uh, the mm, uh, I think this this the first uh, third version it lived probably the shortest time during our project, just a few months. As we realized that it was wrong, just just don't do it. Uh, actors are. <laughs> Good with at most one delivery semantics and just just don't make uh, durable queues out of actors. Use durable queues. So uh, yeah, just don't implement this one delivery semantics using actors. They are not designed for that. So uh, version four is a current and this is actually where we got and we are still there. And this is something which I recommend not only for actor systems. So it's all about fulfillment of a desired state. So let's have a um, closer look at that. So what we started <laughs> realizing that actually we should uh, admit the fact that we live in um, the world of unreliable messaging. And there is a, a great um, article you will find on InfoQ that nobody needs reliable messaging, which uh, he talks about uh, messaging uh, for web-based uh, systems, uh, but it has the uh, same symptoms and also it has same sort of wrong approaches where people try to use, uh, uh, to introduce some sort of guarantees there. And uh, those who worked with <coughs> WS transactions, they may, uh, probably remember like where it's in my mind, it sort of went compl uh, completely wrong path, and we were trying to build kind of two-phase commit based on uh, web-based systems. Um, so if reliability is important on the business level, do it on the business level. So this is what, we, uh, what was our conclusion too. Uh, also, there is a, there are actually se a series of great articles and uh, materials from, uh, from uh, Pat Halland. Um, uh, and uh, there is a quote from him, um, in a system that cannot count on distributed transactions, the management of uncertainty must be implemented in the business logic. So basically he's talking about uh, the same thing. So it's most optimal, most efficient to do in the business logic. Uh, uh, also, he says that um, work happens with a sequence of related messages over time to per perform cooperative work. What's important, it's next statement, this is how it was done centuries ago and it's how it's done today. So uh, think about how people were <coughs> uh, and groups of people were achieving reliable results uh, in unreliable world. So uh, what we had to do, we had to implement reliable collaborations of our actors 
uh, based on unreliable messages uh, sending uh, that were sent in, in, in process. So the, the whole system dies, messages are lost, and it still needs to be reliable. So uh, how we implemented that? Uh, we receive incoming requests. Uh, and this comes from a durable <coughs> queue. So what uh, we uh, do next, it's, it's actually a very much uh, intact, goes intact into principles of domain-driven design. And then, um, so I, I, then I will use words like aggregate root. It's uh, so basically you operate on certain entity. In our case, it was the entity was, like a TV program is an entity, a radio program is an entity. So we evaluate the desired state of our aggregate root. Um, and uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's all information that, uh, uh, that shows where to bring the uh, TV program. It can be, uh, for example, uh, we had old versions of uh, TV program files. We received a new set of media files. It's a six files. Uh, and this is a desired state. Okay, put these six files in the cloud. The desired state should also include information about who needs to be notified about. Because if we don't include it, we, we can sort of forget if system crashes. So we use uh, Outbox pattern for that. Uh, it, in a couple of slides, I will um, mention it um, again. Uh, then we persist the desired state. So we, we evaluate the desired state, we persist it, and then it's uh, uh, written in... Uh, uh, so-called event journal in our case. Uh, then we acknowledge the received message. So message is acknowledged before we started processing it. So Postman is free. We don't uh, keep Postman occupied. Then we proceed with the request execution. Oh, actually, next slide was about Outbox pattern. So Outbox pattern, it ensures that application state uh, <coughs> and its recapitulative domain, domain events that we forward to external consumers are uh, in sync, so they are consistent. So uh, it's quite important. So you, you, you have your, your external listeners which wait for the outcome of your work. So you have to record your, uh, uh, what is expected to be sent to them. So it's also part of your uh, desired state. It's not just upload files, but also notify consumer one, consumer two, and, and so on. So if uh, something happens to your system, uh, when you uh, did all your work but didn't uh, uh, notify your uh, consumers, you may uh, repeat some of your work again. So uh, then request execution uh, basically uh, comes to evaluation of desired state, evaluation of the current state, and then, we, then it's just a pure math. The work is current state minus desired state. So what we need to do, we need to uh, deal with the delta. So if we, if the current state is three files already uploaded, and desired state, these are five new files, but three of them uh, are already in the cloud. So <coughs> we just need to upload two more files. So uh, this desired state concept actually is not something which we invented. Of course, it's um, and the, the whole term also it, it, it's it's not coming from us. So it's one of the core concepts of Kubernetes. Uh, also, uh, Microsoft used it in PowerShell, uh, PowerShell Desired State Configuration. It's, um, so it's a um, it's declarative uh, way of uh, describing what, where you want to bring your system. So then you <coughs> tell system go, and it will try to fulfill the desired state. So this is what uh, we're doing now on every aggregate route, on every entity of our system. Uh, there is an important assumption here is idempotency. Um, because if your system is not idempotent, uh, which means that you can't uh, allow uh, requests to be executed twice, for example, a financial transaction, you may uh, think about other ways of implementing it. But a uh, large major uh, majority of uh, business systems actually are idempotent. So in, in the worst case, you, you, you repeat the operation. And those parts which you can't repeat, yeah, you have to sort of extract from, from this business process and you have to, uh, there you may need to have uh, exactly one delivery, uh, for example. So uh, this is an uh, uh, example of, uh, uh, let me see, here you see the state and then you have state desired. <laughs> And then there is description of the content of uh, it is yeah it's a TV program and uh, this is a bitrate of uh, first MP4 file second MP4 file so it's quality ideas and so on so this is what needs to be done 
And then uh, there is a current state, and this gives us Akamai files. Akamai, so Akamai is one of, the, one of our so-called origins where we upload our files. So this is what we have now out in the cloud. So we compute uh, delta, and then we proceed with requests. So uh, it's easy to clarify it here. You have command publish media set, which consists of a couple of uh, files. Uh, then you have desired state, and you have current state, and you see desired state has also notification. We need to send a notification message. <laughs> and actually, one file is already uploaded, so probably there was an attempt to execute this command uh, before, which failed for some reasons, partly failed, partially failed. So this is remaining work, it's a delta. So we proceed with remaining work. So, uh, but actors are reactive. Uh, so how do they ensure all work is fulfilled? So if the system crashes and, uh, uh, and we, we restart the system, then uh, actors are basically dead. Because in reactive systems, the um, uh, system is uh, waking up on messages. So a message wakes up an actor. So what we have to do, we have to uh, extend our processing workflow. So it's the same workflow, it's just inserted new step, scheduled repeating reminder. So uh, you have an actor which receives a message, uh, uh, upload five uh, <coughs> different media files. But I will be reminding you uh, of uh, you, you need to do it until you're done. Uh, this actually uh, uh, reflects also real world because this is how uh, what makes us reliable in the world of unreliable messaging. We can forget things, but as uh, as long as we get reminded, uh, we can uh, remember them. We can. Uh, <laughs> Um, execute them. So uh, this is why we, because we have limited memory and we, uh, sometimes we don't take notes, but this is what actually makes uh, our people and groups of people working pretty good, that uh, we, we get uh, uh, systematic reminders of what needs to be done. And this is what, um, uh, uh, what we <coughs> implemented in our system. So uh, <coughs> uh, how our aggregate root actors work now? So when actor is waking up, uh, it replaces its actor state from the event journal. It's, it's called state recovery. So, uh, and again, you don't need to use actor system to implement that. Basically, it's you, if you have a, uh, a customer, uh, like electronic shop, for example, and a customer comes back to the shop and he wants to buy something, then, okay, you <coughs> uh, read it from the database, it's, it's data, and then you get its car, uh, uh, current state. Then you will let remain, remaining work. Let's say there is something in his uh, uh, shopping cart and he wants to, he pays for it and then uh, maybe he already paid for it. So, okay, I see that current state is this and then desired state, he wants this book or these uh, shoes be to, uh, sent to him. So this is remain, remaining work. So if remaining work is nothing, then we don't need to remind this, uh, this actor uh, about anything. So it can just uh, fall asleep. And uh, so in interactive systems, uh, the part of the system which has nothing uh, to do should immediately <coughs> release the memory and just fall asleep. And if there is remaining, uh, remaining work, then it needs to do this rema uh, remaining work. So uh, main lesson that we learned from modeling actors' behavior is that um, uh, consider using patterns established in real-world collaboration. So the real world is actually quite solid. And uh, uh, if we try to think every time uh, when we face some complex design problems, we try to think, okay, how does it work in the real world? How can we model it so it, it looks like real world because <laughs> the actual world uh, is solid? Also, um, uh, that's a sort of a new slide which I just added um, uh, yesterday because I recently, as I mentioned in the beginning, I, I went to a conference about domain-driven design it's called Kandinsky. And then uh, there, is a, there was a great uh, uh, talk called Events, Workflows and Sagas by Lutz Hun Henken. Uh, and uh, it resonated very uh, well with um, sort of... Um, uh, talk which I was doing at, at in the same conferences. Uh, so um, he, he questioned that uh, we need uh, tools like workflow engines and saga managers where you, you describe somewhere else, sometimes they're using some strange language like XML, um, uh, 
what needs to be done, and then you, uh, you have a workflow uh, engine. So it tries to uh, uh, bring from state A and to state Z your, your system. What if your uh, uh, system is in state M? What does it do? Does it need to uh, roll everything back and start from uh, from scratch? Uh, when I was a schoolboy, uh, we had a uh, math teacher, and she was trying to explain us how uh, mathematicians think. And then um, I don't know if you uh, heard the story in your um, your school um, or similar like that. She said that the normal people, when they boil water, uh, we need to take a kettle. At the time, there were no electrical, electrical uh, kettles. Were only, uh, everyone was using gas, basically. So you need uh, to fill it with water. You need to put it on the uh, oven and then, uh, and then you wait until it boils. And then if you come back home and then you, uh, you see that the kettle already is filled with water, what you do? Okay, you just uh, boil it. But uh, this isn't how mathematicians uh, think. And uh, maybe actually she meant programmer, but at that time, uh, there were not very many programmers uh, among us. Uh, like if mathematicians come uh, home and see that there is already water in the kettle, then of course what uh, he does and just throws uh, uh, um, away the water because then uh, he brings the system back to the state where he has algorithms to solve it. Then he can fill it with water and then, and then, and then boil it. And this is actually how most of workflow engines and saga managers work. Even though some of them optimized, they can actually catch up on certain level but they always try sort of to put uh, your uh, business process into some sort of scripts. So where <coughs> what we found that uh, we uh, really need to just to follow the event-driven pattern that, okay, uh, we uh, uh, evaluate the system state, we evaluate desired state, we evaluate delta. We don't need workflow engines. We, at any given state, we know what to do next. We, uh, we, we evaluate this, uh, this diffs. So... Uh, uh, so conclusion, uh, actors uh, use uh, most ones delivery for good reasons. So don't think that actor models are non-reliable. They are actually very reliable and they're very efficient. And um, uh, don't use dur durable messages, message queues like your transaction guards. Like, uh, uh, and this is a mistake that many development teams uh, repeat. They okay, I have a um, durable message queues. I will not act it until everything is done. Just just reconsider it, especially if you have long-running processes. Uh, persist uh, uh, your intention, record your uh, triggered operations, um, and then uh, calculate from desired current state what needs to be done. And then you will find that your system actually is simplified and uh, more efficient uh, if it uh, works uh, using, uh, using these, these principles. So with that, I don't know how are we the time. We probably have a few minutes. Two minutes. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh <laughs>